go ahead and welcome you to week seven of our essential study. I'm so glad you were able to join us and we have some really exciting uh, concepts to go over this week and it's the, I, the concepts that are in the scripture about regeneration, adoption, and conversion. And when we think about regeneration, the word re regeneration means to come alive again. And the area of our life that comes alive again when we think about being regenerated is our spirit man. And it is explained in scripture with terms like the new birth, the sprouting of a seed, or even the resurrection are terms that are used to talk about this regeneration of our spirit man when we get born again. And the, the, when you think about being regenerated and the part of us that is recreated or made new, it is our spirit. And all of us are, are created with a spirit, with a soul, and with a body. And when we talk about our spirit man, God created our spirit to be the, because he is spirit, that it was through our spirit that we would have relationship and communion with God. So in man's original creation, he was created with the life and the breath of God in his spirit. And his, through that life and that breath and his relationship with God, he received God's communications and God's perspective. And he looked out on his world and he understood his world and himself from God's perspective. Well, when we talk about the fall of man, what when we talk about spiritual death, the part of man that died at the fall was his spirit. It was a spiritual death that he was cut off from the life and the breath of God that was in his original creation. And now being cut off from the life and the breath of God, his spirit man was living in darkness and was there was spiritual death that entered that part of our being our three-part being, and man no longer had information coming from God through his spirit. And so he was living in this world, and he was left to himself to figure it out and to figure himself out. So when we talk about being regenerated, it's our spirit man that gets regenerated and born again. And there's a passage of scripture in your material uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 that is really familiar to everyone. And it's, it's the scripture that talks about them. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. So I want to take a, a minute and just look at the old things that have passed away and what are the new things that have come. So when we look at the old things, the old things are the things that are the result of the fall. And one of the things that happened as, as a result of the fall is that we lived under guilt and condemnation. We w had disobeyed God and we had fallen short of his glory. We had missed the mark and we lived under the guilt and the condemnation and the shame of that disobedience. And not only did we live under guilt and shame, but we also were powerless over the sin nature that had entered man at the fall. That this, I could no, I had no power to overcome the desires and the passions of my flesh. I was powerless over those things. Uh, the other thing that happened to man at the fall that is part of the old thing that has passed away is that we lived in darkness and we lack the ability, ability to experience God and understand his word. I no longer had God's logic and God's perspective. I was no longer hearing the voice of God and, and able to see him and understand him and understand my world and myself in light of that. So I was living in darkness, uh, ha didn't have the ability to experience and understand God's word. And I was also destitute. I had no hope of a future. I had no hope of eternal life. There was no life for me apart from the life that I had in this world. 
So when we talk about those old things passing away, new things have come, we have new things that have replaced those old things and the new things are, I'm no longer under guilt and condemnation, isolated from God, but I am now accepted and enjoyed by God. I now have a, the ability to live in relationship with him again. He is my father. We talked about that a few weeks ago, that God is my father. I have a relationship with him. I'm no longer isolated, living um, apart from him, living under shame and guilt, but I am now accepted. The word that, for that acceptance is the word adoption. We've been adopted into God's family. We are now a part of God's family. I am not under a trial period to see if this works out. I'm not a secondhand child in God's family, but I am a full child of God, accepted, adopted in, grafted in with all the privileges and all the rights of any natural born child. So I'm no longer living isolated from God, but I am now adopted. The other new thing that has come is that I now have the indwelling spirit again, and I now have power over sin. So when I fell, the man fell in the garden, I'm cut off from the life and the breath of God. When I get regenerated, the life and the breath of God come back into my spirit. It creates that new birth experience. And I now have God's indwelling spirit and I have the power to resist the sin nature on the inside of me. That is a powerful truth that I'm no longer powerless to the passions of my flesh and the lusts of my flesh and the desires of my old man, but I now have the ability to resist those passions and those lusts and those desires and say no to them. The third thing that happens to me in this new creation is that I can now experience God and understand his word. And in the past, we've talked about the idea of revelation and the ability to have the cover taken off in that because of the indwelling spirit and this dynamic of this relationship that I have with God, when I read his word, the spirit of God on the inside of me helps me to understand it and I can come to know God through his word and the very same spirit that breathed life on the writers of the word breathes life on me and I understand the words that were written by those writers. So I now have the ability to understand and comprehend God through his word and through the indwelling spirit. And I also now have a significant destiny, not only in this lifetime, but I have eternal life an eternal destiny. So the old things have passed away and those new things have come. When we talk about the new things that have come and having the indwelling spirit and power over sin, that is called conversion. I now have been the word conversion, meaning a turning or a change. And that change is not a quantitative change, but it's a qualitative change, meaning this, that when you think about an automobile, when you think about a, a, uh, a, the, when a, a automobile, like let's take a Mustang, for example, that there is a, a, a car called a Mustang and every year, uh, I think Ford makes those Mustangs, puts out a new version of the Mustang. It's the same vehicle, but it looks a little different. That's a, a change to a vehicle and to an existing um, uh, a, a quantity. So they're putting out more of the same product. It might look a little different, but it's more of the same product. Well, when we talk about conversion, the change in conversion is qualitatively new, meaning uh, we can take the idea of a horse and a buggy. And a horse and a buggy is a mode of transportation. Well, when we went from the horse in the buggy to an automobile, we had a, a whole quality of transportation. It was a new quality of transportation. It was now run on gas, it had an engine, it was a whole, the, the whole change of quality, not just quantity. And it's the idea, that's what conversion means. It means that I have a new operating system. 
So my old man is operating in a system of death. My new man is operating in a spirit of life. It's the quality of my experience now as a new creation has changed. I'm now experiencing a life under the quality of life, no longer under the quality of death. And so we talk about those changes and we, we use the, the term new birth and, and the, the idea of the new birth, Paul uses the word created, that we are, he says that we are now new creations, that the, what has happened in regeneration and adoption and conversion is so powerful that Paul had to use the word creation that we are now created new in our spirits. We're new creations. And Paul says this in Ephesians 4, 24, that I am to put on the new man or to put on the new creation. It says, put on that new man, which was created in true righteousness and holiness. And Colossians 3, 10 says that I am to put on the new man who was created according to the image of him who created, um, who, who created him. So that we're to put on this new creation. So I have the, the, my spirit has been recreated and made new. My spirit man is complete in Christ. But where I put on the new man is in my understanding and in my thought process. I am to be transformed into this new creation that has taken place in my spirit by renewing my mind. And as my mind is renewed to what has happened in my spirit, already happened in my spirit, man, as my mind is renewed to what's happened in that new creation, I now then have the ability to walk out that new creation in my life. So we're to put on the new creation, to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, to allow the word and the spirit to renew us in the spirit of our mind so that my mind is in agreement with what's happened in my spirit. And when my spirit and my mind come into agreement, my body walks out what has happened to me through regeneration, adoption, and conversion. Some really powerful truths. I really encourage you to look at the scriptures that are connected with these three lessons, to meditate on these scriptures so that you really grasp and understand what's happened to you in the new birth and how that really affects the way that we live while we're here on earth in this lifetime. So enjoy your conversation and um, enjoy the time you spend going over your questions. And I'm just praying and believing that the Holy Spirit's going to move among you in your conversation to help you grasp and understand these truths. Thank you.